Uh, well, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share the stage with Velotic. Uh, we're going to be doing this presentation together. Uh, this will certainly be the presentation with the longest distance between the two speakers, I think we're going to do today. And so what we decided to do was to cover the top 10 worst HP calculators ever made. Uh, we've been doing uh, the last several years with uh, HHC, especially uh, looking at some of the best HPs and even some of the best non-HPs. I've made it kind of a, um, a little habit of mine to call out hidden gems, even among the dark forces of Texas Instruments. But uh, we, we hadn't really had a presentation where we just laid out flat the stinkers that we really think uh, HP has left behind us. So we're going to talk about the 10 worst, in our opinion, HP calculators ever made. So starting off, um, we decided to present the worst HPs. But since in the, uh, in the interest of time, we're not going to do the top 10. We're going to do the top 10 base 8, figuring that would be a, a good thing to do in our presentation here. So we've gone octal, the top 10 best 8, the top 10. So we're going to alternate choices, starting from one and then the other. But when we get to the top two, Velotic and I have chosen our top two, we're going to put it up to a vote. Uh, this is election season uh, in the United States, at least, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever we call an election anyway. And so we're going to put it up to a vote and see between the top two what you think is the number one base eight and then the number two base eight. So hopefully everybody will be ready. So here we go. These are our opinions, as I've said before, and we're going to stick to them. So here we go. <laughs> this one is Velotix. Okay. Um, we have called this the worst HP calculators, but what is a bad HP calculator? Is it one that doesn't work, the keys stick, or what? Um, it can be argued that HP haven't made anything that's a really a bad calculator. Uh, so what we're arguing is something somewhat different. It, a perfectly good calculator can be bad as an HP calculator. And my prime example of this is the HP Success. It's just a cheapo, nice little scientific calculator with lots of functions, um, with rather tacky keys, um, a rubbery keyboard. Um, it's the sort of thing you'd buy in a thrift store, uh, and you'd be very happy with it for a couple of years. But for HP to have made it, um, I'm not sure it should really have had an HP label on the front. So there you are, um, a calculator that works, but uh, probably shouldn't be an HP. Gene, over to you. That's all right. By the way, we will have a dishonorable mention page of machines that did not quite make the top 10 base eight. So if you don't see the one you think is the stinker, it almost certainly is going to be on the dishonorable mention page. My choice here is the HP 10S and HP 8S. I mean, just look at it. Do I really need to go any further? Should I just click to the next page? Now, of the two, the 10S certainly looks nicer, but uh, the 8S in particular is just a stinker. I mean, look at it. Uh, it's one of the few HPs that has a dedicated X cube key. And why not X to the fourth? And I jokingly said, why not put a dedicated X to the seventh key on the thing? I mean, where do you stop? Where do you stop? I use the HP 8S to level a table. That use of the calculator, by the way, is not mentioned in the awfully small owner's manual, but it's been one of the best uses I have found for that HP 8S. It's one of the most hollow uh, calculators I've ever seen. Uh, and that's saying something when you have the universe of some of the ones that HP made in the early 2000s. Of these, of course, I think the HP 8S is the worst of the two. Uh, that HP 8S picture is from the internet. The owner asked for his name to be kept private. Does not want anyone to know that he actually has one of these. So that's my choice for number seven, base eight, the HP 10S and the HP 8S. They're exactly the same, same machine, simply in a different physical factor. No difference otherwise. Back to Velotic. 
Thank you. Thank and you. by the way, I was a beta tester on those models. Uh, they basically sent us a cheapo scientific calculator made by a standard Chinese company who made the Casio versions of these. And HP had clearly gone to them uh, and simply said, make one of these for us. Uh, they did change some of the software for it. Uh, I think they extended the precision. It was fun to play with them, but it wasn't a real HP calculator once more. OK, my next one. The 28C. Um, you may be surprised at this. It introduced RPL. It was wonderful. It had terrific functions. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a logical uh, successor to the HP 41, but, but it was a step ahead. But think of what it did. The battery cover was absolutely terrible. Um, you couldn't pull it off. If you pulled it off, either it broke or it fell on the floor uh, and the cat ate it and uh, you couldn't put the batteries back in. Uh, or you had to crawl on all fours under a cupboard to pick it up. Uh, then you put the new batteries in and you couldn't squeeze it in. Then you finally got it in and you had memory lost because it had taken you so long to change the batteries. Um, this was shared with the HP 18C. Someone had thought it would be really neat compared to previous battery covers, but sorry, it wasn't. Now, the next bad feature was the stiff keys. Uh, if we'd had an HP 41 or, or one of the earlier models for years and years and we'd been pressing the keys, suddenly we had to press these about twice as hard. You would miss them. You had to actually watch what was going up on the screen. You couldn't just press the keys um, at random. Uh, the color scheme, well, they were trying to get away from previous color schemes. And uh, I suspect that they thought plum was uh, a nice color in fashion at the time. But, but was it? Not for calculators. And then it had 2K of RAM. Now, they called it an infinite stack. But how can it be an infinite stack if you can put about 20 objects on it? Um, we understand that this was um, the first and the only way that Bill Wicks could introduce a new family of calculators, the RPL, and of course it had CAS in it. So Gene, the last point, um, without it we wouldn't have had the 48SX, which is what Bill Wicks really wanted and beyond. So we, we can't blame it, but really what a pity uh, that it had uh, these features to downgrade it. Thanks. Now, the next choice is mine, and I will take full responsibility for it. It may be the only one that actually may step on a few toes, because for this one, I'm going way back in time, way back in time. So here it goes. I'm going to call out the HP 55. Sure, has a very wonderful timer, great timer, but relatively small program memory and a fairly high price. When it came out in seven, uh, July of 73, it was $395. As an early programmable, it also used some key code conventions that were that are odd by later standards that were still being developed by Hewlett Packard. I have a ter I have an emulator on my phone for this one. I have a terrible time keying in a 30-step program because of it. Uh, for example, key code that would show up in the program memory 32 and then a negative 30 is actually for the function uh, pressing the G, the blue G key, X equal Y, go to 30, which is unlike any programming. Uh, structure that followed it all. So it's certainly an oddball. Granted, every uh, allowance being given for it being the, you know, the second programmable really introduced, but it's a very, very tough one. Um, apparently, I would also argue it not, was not a very successful model for Hewlett Packard, as it was still on sale as late as August of 1978. Think about how the calculator world had changed by August of 1978 for $110 in the uh, old calculator advertisements that I had found. So I would suggest that represents a large unsold inventory of HP 55. So I think the market had deemed it a failure. And uh, I'm going to call that one out and say, to me, that's the number five uh, of the worst. Velotic? Yes. Um, you may be surprised at this choice, too. The 15C limited edition. We had been screaming for HP to bring back a 15C. 
After all, they now make the 12C uh, using a programmable ROM, um, using a very standard factory manufacture system. Uh, why not just change the keys and change the ROM uh, and you could bring back the 15C? In fact, they did that at the HHC uh, the year before they brought this out. They gave each one of us something called an HP 15C Plus. Um, and they were very nice. They had gone to the factory and they had said, please just make 12 Cs with this ROM in it and with this keyboard. But then when it came to manufacturing a large batch of these, first of all, it had a bad bug. The display kept blinking on all sorts of occasions. Um, why? The self-tests corrupted memory. You couldn't run a self-test. One of the beauties of the Voyager series was that you could just uh, click the combination of keys and it will tell you I'm fine. Not this one. Maybe it will tell you it was fine, but it wasn't. One of the horrible problems with it was that um, it was made probably in a hurry uh, by a Chinese factory which forgot to use deionized water to wash the circuit boards. Um, Cyril puts it uh, much more bluntly than that. Um, and therefore, quite a number of them failed. They had to be sent back to HP uh, and got a new one. Um, Cyril and Tim, who had done this, were really very unhappy about it. It was so close to what we'd wanted, and yet there were features it didn't have. Um, I understand that they didn't use the original 15C ROM for it, did they? Uh, I suspect that they sent the manual to uh, the Chinese company and said start again. So odd, considering that the original batch of 15C pluses was fine. So there you have it, so close and yet so far. Gene, last point. It was expensive and of course now it's expensive because collectors want it even if we don't use it. And last point. One of the horrible results of this was that uh, Cyril and Tim said, this was a failure, we're not going to make any more comebacks. They did not get round to making another batch of 16 Cs, which many of us would have liked. Um, they certainly didn't consider making any comeback 41s. They had not been keen on the idea, but if this had been successful, they would quite possibly have made a new batch of 41s. So. The idea was great. Um, the actual execution, unfortunately, was pretty terrible. All right. Num number three. For me, it's the HP 12C Platinum, the first version that came out. Uh, there's a picture of the HP 12C Platinum. The first version uh, was the one that came out with uh, out parentheses on it. For, first of all, if you look, you have a platinum faceplate, I guess suggesting more valuable than the gold of the 12C, but you put these very strange orangey yellow shifted functions on it, which completely disappear depending on the viewing angle. I don't know what they were thinking uh, when they decided to come up with that. Uh, but they had an algebraic mode that uh, was added, but without parentheses. I've covered up the very bottom of the screen shows the remaining bottom row of keys on the original 12C Platinum, and I wanted to scream at it when I first saw it because uh, without parentheses, you're back to adding machine logic, which is just <laughs> asking for trouble. I mean, it was just horrible. It's no wonder that uh, they also had a last X in algebraic mode, but it does who knows what. Um, there's a whole big paragraph in the owner's manual for the 12C Platinum that uh, Tony Hutchins and I wrote. And essentially, it was trying to describe what last X did. And the owner's manual purposefully did not use it because we could not be sure we had it all figured out. Uh, uh, last X, just horrible. They also had an owner's manual for an algebraic machine that didn't have a single algebraic example in it. Not a single example of how to add two numbers in algebraic mode or anything. So it was so desperately important to come out with an algebraic version of the 12C, but I guess they assumed everybody would always know how to do everything in algebraic mode. Very, very strange. 
Uh, it also had some problems in that its display quality was much uh, of a much poorer nature than the original 12C. For example, that's a zoomed in picture of the actual display of that 12C Platinum. I mean, that's just nasty. You put that next to a 12C, which is still being made. It is the same display other than adding an algebraic indicator to it. And that's just that's just pure gnarly. So uh, to me, this one almost bubbled up to the top two because it showed such a, uh, um, a combination of poor, poor design choices. But for me, this is number three. Okay, number two. I was going to build the tension here a little bit, Velotic. Oh, go ahead, Gene. Can I have some music? Dun, dun, dun. All right, again, number two. For the top two choices, we're going to talk about them, but the, what ends up number one and number two will be dependent upon the vote of the audience. So here goes. This is Velodic's choice for the worst. This is a love it or loathe it machine. It's a fridge magnet, but with a calculator added to the front of it uh, instead of a picture of your favorite uh, holiday destination. Riveting. Rivets all along the top, rivets all along the bottom. <laughs> um, why would HP make it? Lots of Chinese companies make nice things like this. Actually, HP made it because Cyril and Tim, the HP calculator team, felt that it was wrong that every single piece of HP would buy a Chinese calculator, stick HP on it, and make it as a giveaway. Uh, you can get giveaway calculators with HP on them, but not made by HP, of all sorts of sizes and shapes. I have a large collection. So they said, let HP make this. So they made a calculator that was going to be a giveaway, but it was just a bit too expensive to give away. So instead, they started selling it. It's got a lovely display, except, of course, uh, that the commas in the display are at the top instead of the bottom. But if you're using a fridge magnet, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, next point. Have you tried changing the batteries? Well, have you? Probably not. You probably threw it away after you, the batteries died. Uh, if, if you have, then you'll know all sorts of things about that. Um, and I the way you to, might I have seen on the back, it, yeah. it says 10S. No, 10S. It's, a, it's supposed to be the Model 10. Go on. So, best use for it, clip a to-do note on your fridge with it, and, Gene, to-do, buy a real HP calculator. <laughs> That's certainly a very strong contender, in my opinion, for the, uh, the worst ever made. And I see Martin has one on his fridge, but I don't see the note saying buy a real HP that it should be holding up. So there you go. That's that's a one a strong contender for the worst ever. Here's my worst ever coming up next. Big drum roll here because I believe it's the 49G. I think it's a disaster in so many ways. A display cover that got scratched up. Hard to read the display when you've got scratches from pulling the thing in and out of a backpack. A display cover that scratched. Rubber keys. Rubber keys. Like, hello, a blue color scheme that was uh, tagged with a three-letter acronym in terms of a color that it represents that I won't uh, repeat here in company, but a nasty blue color scheme. And the key symbols of the thing wore off despite, despite being assured that it would last 100 years. The original 39G and 49G, same style, keys and problems, so you could easily say 49G, 39G, and 40G. True, I suspect no eventual 50G without this, of course. I mean, come on. So take a look at how terrible it is. There's a 49G that shows a few of the keys where the uh, symbols have just flat out worn off. There's a zoomed in picture of the function keys really and truly just nasty looking stuff and there's the number keys at the bottom it's a good thing we kind of know what those are supposed to be 
So uh, in my opinion, uh, it has to be a low point. Has to be a low point. I agree with some of the comments I'm seeing up here. Remember, there is a dishonorable mention list. And some of you have got some that just for Velotic and I just did not quite bubble up into the top 10 base eight. So those are the t options we would like to put forward to a vote. Don't vote particularly for something that didn't make our top two. You know, just like in an election, you have to choose between the two uh, candidates that are offered, at least in our system over here in the United States. So what we'd like to ask you is, have a libertarian candidate usually. Maybe we should have made it three. Well, for a libertarian candidate over here, which might actually be the best option, they are simply a footnote. So here we go. Vote for the worst, the best of the worst, as a matter of fact. Which is the worst? Thank you. So everybody should have, who's on the WebEx should have a polling option there. And we are not quite done with the presentation, but please vote. Because I do want to show the dishonorable mention list. Some of you are showing your vote as you walk out of the polling location. <laughs> hey, Gene, that 49 with the keys horn off, is that Joe Horns by any chance? That is Joe Horns. That is Joe yeah. Horns 49G. I could tell by the display modification. He, he took it out and got me a good picture of it just for this presentation. <laughs> ten, 10 seconds, people, if you would like to, uh, to vote, and then I'll close the poll. Yeah, and the traditional HP logo on that one. <laughs> uh, and believe me, to me, it's a close call. Velotic has a lot of good points on the quick calc. Yeah. Some of the other ones, number three and four, could easily be up there as well. In our dry run last night, I think the wrong calculator won tonight. <laughs> Joe also had a 49G that had buttons inserted in the buttonhole upside down. So it looks like they won't fit, but actually the buttons on the assembly line were somehow inserted in an inverted way. Well, I wonder if that's because they were put together down under. <laughs> <laughs> Will you accept the result when you lose? Yeah, you got no choice. Ah, uh, well, there you go. So there we go. Yeah. So we have the result. This is a very nice forty-nine G. Much better. A, so uh, I'm not sure if everybody can see the result there, but uh, what we've got the quick calc uh, got thirty-five percent of the vote. And the HP 49G got 50% of the vote, and uh, and the other 15% of people didn't vote. I'll uh, put you back on presentation, Gene. Thank you. The 39G was nothing special either. I, I kind of consider the 39, the 40G, and the 49G, since they all share the same body, as being the same. I'm going to put no. the uh, presentation. No, the 39G is algebraic. The others are not. That's, that's true, true. They even, it didn't even have a redeeming quality of algebraic. Quite the color scheme was bad. Speaking of color schemes, let's look at the uh, dishonorable mention list. Uh, yes, the 49G Plus and the 48G2, keys that clicked but did nothing. I remember within 10 minutes of receiving my first 49G, I was on the phone to the head of HP Marketing saying, listen to this, and I would click. She, I would say that's the button clicking, but nothing's showing on the screen. We know how long it took them to figure that one out. The HP 10B2, this is the rubber version. That's the only HP I have ever thrown away. And it was a business model, which you would think I would have kept, but it was so terrible. And the 17B2, the rubber version of that as well. Uh, somewhat birds of a feather, the 33S and the 35S. They fixed so many things with the 33S, but... Uh, it, it still had so many problems. We also, uh, and Velotic and I talked about these, the non-HP 34C Spice series because of the mechanical issues that the 31, the 32, and 33 are often subject to. Uh, the 39G2, a bridge to nowhere. And uh, I had also put up the 39G Plus in particular because of the green and orange colored versions that they had. 
Um, you could have a, a, a dark green letter on a dark blue background, um, something out of um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe with black buttons on a black background, turning black to indicate you pressed them. Uh, there are all sorts of other ones, but the 9S, the 9G, the 30S, and some of those were just not as bad as some of these other ones, knowing as well that this is only our opinion. But hopefully, uh, at least the many of the ones that were in the top 10 base 8, you might also have felt some slight stinky feelings toward in the past. Well, Lodic, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you uh, have the final words here on this uh, topic. Thank you, Gene. Um, have we one more slide? We did have one more slide. Yes. Okay. Um, HP has made us loads of wonderful calculators. Uh, we picked a few that we had gripes with. It's not necessarily terrible. A few people have actually been waving about their HP 49Gs at the moment and saying how wonderful they were. Well, <laughs> every one of these had some good features about it. Our point is that uh, these had many bad features. Nevertheless, if you collect calculators, you will want one of these as well, won't you? In fact, in the case of the quick calc, you will want six of them because they were came in six different colors. Um, so we now return you to the regular scheduled programming. And of course, it'll be an RPN unless you're an RPL programmer. Thank you, everybody. But there's one thing that I use the 49G still for and that is the quick reference manual because the 50g didn't have one indeed uh, thanks guys uh, roger roger makes a good point the um uh, I, I think you win the award guys gene and Bloddick, for the most number of uh, chat entries generated on both uh, webex and youtube uh, I can barely keep up with him, the, the two of them scrolling up the screen side by side. So um, excellent talk. Uh, clearly lots of debate going on there. 